2020. On the ABC News Magazine, 2020 with Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters. Tonight, a medical time bomb and the clock has run out. Decades ago, this radioactive substance was used to enhance x-rays. Storm gets into the body, it'll kill you. Guaranteed. Thousands of people were injected. Now, some are dead. More are dying. So this man was given this dye in the 50s, and look what it's done. Liver tissue eaten away. This is Thoratrast. Who's at risk? Is there help? Tom Gerald exposes what others have known and ignored. Thoratrast was a sentence of death. And could this help solve the daycare crisis? Seniors pitching in. You stay with young people, I say you'll think young, you like young. Youngsters with elders. A tradition becomes a career. Money may be less important because the reward goes right to the heart. How much you really are needed. You really are needed here. John Stossel explores a partnership that's a natural. Time for each other. Bat Bands, start your engines. The Cape Crusader's back, and the big screen's got him. Here's a look at Gotham. Who's playing the Joker? It's Jack Nicholson. Wait till they get a load of me. Tonight, what it's like and how it was. From Cartoon Alley to matinee movies to primetime TV. Yes, Commissioner. Bob Brown with a Hell's a Poppin' preview. Batman's back. Our lead tonight, a macabre twist on the phrase, sitting on a time bomb. 2020 has learned that a medical technique widely used decades ago has turned thousands of unsuspecting people into human time bombs. By outward appearances, they're in perfect health. But a substance inside their bodies is literally eating away a vital organ. The number of reported deaths is on the rise, but a heated warning could prolong a life. We hope then to get the word out. Beyond the personal horror stories, there's the matter of laying blame because warnings were given but were too long ignored. Tom Gerald has our report. It just was boom, lose weight, boom, have a biopsy, and, and you're dead. They certainly should have told us when he had the test that this could have caused cancer, and they didn't. The injection of this intensely radioactive material was in and of itself a sentence of death. What these people are talking about is Thorotrast. Its active ingredient, thorium dioxide, a highly radioactive substance. Thorotrast was routinely injected into patients to provide better x-ray pictures. Here's one example. It was widely used in medical centers throughout the world for over 30 years from the 1930s, possibly into the 60s. Hundreds of thousands of people may have been injected with it. Unlike other radioactive diagnostic materials, Thorotrast cannot be excreted from the body and after a period of time would cause bone cancer, breast cancer, and especially liver cancer. All of this despite repeated warnings in medical journals beginning as early as the 1920s. Morning. Dr. Grafton Chase, a professor of physical chemistry at the Philadelphia College of Pharmacy and Science, showed us with a Geiger counter just how radioactive this substance is. I think that you can see that this is indeed the case. I'll turn the volume up a little bit so you can see. And if we move the thorium away from the detector, then the activity decreases. So I think we have here a rather ample proof that thorium dioxide is indeed radioactive. Dr. Chase also showed us just what devastating effects this substance over a period of time will have on organs of the body. Uh, in the Petri dish, I have two pieces of liver tissue, which are normal liver tissue. They were removed from a patient at autopsy, and they represent what a piece of liver should look like. These two pieces of liver were taken from an individual who, who died after having received thoratrast uh, approximately 20 years earlier. And I think you can see there has been considerable liver damage. When enough liver cells have been destroyed, the patient will die. 
we take either the biopsy samples or the autopsy samples. Of Dr. Tissue. John Heller, a physician, biophysicist, and former professor at Yale Medical School, began waging a fight against the use of thorotrast in the 1950s. He appears as an expert witness in thorotrast-related cases. Those red peaks are produced by thorium. Thorium gets into the body, it'll kill you, guaranteed. You have x-rays. Explain to me briefly what those are, sir. This is an x-ray of a young mother, and this white stuff here, which is probably going up to the base of the skull and down into the chest, is the radiation from the injection. So everyone who's dying from this are not 65, 70-year-old people who have been carrying it around for 30 years. Yes, that's correct. Some sure. are in their 30s that were injected as children. That's right. Doctor, why was Thorotrast used so widely and so long in the medical community despite the warnings? They wanted the most elegant x-ray. These people were under a sentence of death the minute that plunger went down the syringe. Who were some of these people injected and what did it do to them and their families? George Karabjanian, injected in 1956 for x-rays for migraine headaches. 31 years passed. Like a ticking time bomb, Thorotrast struck. This past October, shortly after this photograph was taken of him and his first grandchild, he was hospitalized with Thorotrast-induced cancer. By New Year's Eve, he was dead. He leaves a wife and four grown children. His daughter, Nancy. Tell me something about your father. My father was one of those people that was almost too full of life. He, uh, he loved everything. He was, he was a terrific man, and he really enjoyed his family. He really enjoyed his life with my mother. He could take a bad situation and make it wonderful. Do you know if he was given any warning at all that Thorotrast was radioactive material that could never be taken from his body? He wasn't given any warning at all. We never even heard the word before this past October. Did he decline very quickly? Uh, it didn't seem it at the time. When you're caught in a, in a tunnel like that, uh, you don't realize it. I didn't realize the rapid weight loss until he died, until I now look back at pictures. John Miles, in a 1952 photo with his fiancée, Joan Levins. He was 22. He was injected with Thorotrast for x-rays after passing out from allergic reaction to foods. 35 years later, he developed widespread black and blue marks on his body. He was hospitalized. The diagnosis, Thorotrast-induced cancer. Within 20 days, he was dead. He too leaves a wife and four grown children. His widow, Joan, and his son, Kevin. My husband passed out once or twice from food allergies, and he was injected with Thorotrast at that time for one of the tests. Did you know it was Thorotrast? No, we didn't. And he didn't either, or he would never have agreed to it if he had known. And uh, nobody knew about it until he got sick and died. I mean, he was just angry that the tests were done because he said that he knew that they were allergies and there were, none of those tests were, were needed. It turned out a month later it was proven that he was correct, that it was just simple allergies. If he avoided three foods, he wouldn't have any side effects. How often do you find a non-emergency procedure in which this is used? I have never seen anything other than a non-acute case. They described my father's liver as looking like a piece of Swiss cheese. For the first time in my life, I saw my father cry. Uh, he cried for about two minutes. He uh, stopped crying, and he said, OK, time to get down to business. It's just incredible how quickly his condition deteriorated. In the last two weeks, he was suffering immensely. There were so many doctors in and out of his room, and they all said the same thing. What would they say? They said Thorotrast. They said this man was given this dye in the 50s, and look what it's done. Now there's nothing we can do for him. He's going to die. He told my mother at one point that he felt like the lead character in the movie DOA, only it waited 30 years to kill him and that, like DOA, he was poisoned and didn't know by whom or by what or how or why. And the end result was that he died. It's a sad, sad thing because any type of cancer is sad. However, when you find out or feel that perhaps something could have been done about it, 
That's the irritating part. What can be done for the living who were injected with Thorotrast? Stan Snyder rebuilds antique trucks. In 1951, as a 20-year-old serving with the Air Force in England, he developed problems with his knee. He was sent by doctors to an English hospital where he was injected with Thorotrast for x-rays. He lived a normal life for the next 34 years, but then in 1985, the same pattern we've already seen. He began developing liver problems. You get very tired. I mean, I used to go 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day, no problem. And there towards the last, I mean, in the middle of the afternoon, I'd have to lay down and take a nap. It just took all the energy right out of me. I started feeling bad and weak and turned yellow. Uh, very irritable. I mean, I was hard on my wife and hard on everybody around me, and uh, there was something wrong, and I knew it. They made a bunch of tests and said that the, the liver had to be, I had to have a liver transplant. Was, uh, Dr. Was Ira Fox of the University of Pennsylvania Medical School treated Snyder. When we did his liver transplant operation, we removed the majority of his remaining thoratrast, and therefore his chances of developing a cancer were reduced dramatically. And I still have it in me, and he told me after the liver transplant that probably 25 years from that time it would ruin this liver. So it's something that doesn't leave you. And now they tell me I have to have my spleen taken out because of it, it's ruined. Cancer of the spleen remains a significant possibility for him. It was just a bad thing all the way around because it was radioactive material and it just sticks with you. For Doug Webster, it's a long, tough struggle that has a long way to go. He's been diagnosed as having thorotrast induced cancer that was inoperable and that he had six months to live. His well, wife, Joan. My husband was wonderful. I, I couldn't have managed the way he did. We had three or four days where we <sighs> cried a lot, talked a lot. He received a liver transplant last December, but he's been hospitalized since January in intensive care most of the time. And further complications have developed. His immune system is weak. The Websters live 300 miles from University Presbyterian Hospital in Pittsburgh, where he was being treated. Joan Webster moved into a nearby hotel and has been at his side throughout his ordeal. He had staph pneumonia and he had this serious virus in his lungs and it's slow. In the ICU unit, they let me stay a little longer because he's been back there so long. In between times, I read or put puzzles together crochet or knit, anything I can do to keep myself sane. He doesn't expect to be around too much longer, even with a transplant. Uh, the life expectancy is not, not that great. But we would like to see these people get what they deserve for selling us all these years. Who was responsible for Thorotrast? It was originally manufactured in this country by the Hayden Chemical Corporation. Hayden sold the Thorotrast business to American Cyanamid, which later sold it but maintained a royalty on sales. Hayden became involved in a series of corporate acquisitions. The Tenneco Corporation acquired Hayden's assets. 2020 asked for an interview with spokespersons from both companies. Tenneco declined our request because of ongoing litigation. American Cyanamid also declined. A spokesman would say only, we have never sold our manufactured Thorotrast. Both companies are facing lawsuits over the product. Perhaps the most shocking aspect of the Thorotrast story is the number of warnings that were posted for years until the Food and Drug Administration in the mid-1960s issued strict labeling requirements that effectively banned the regular use of thorium dioxide in the body. A warning from 1925 in the Journal of the American Medical Association. When long-lived radioactive substances are introduced into the body, death may follow a long time after. Seven years later, Thorotrast was reviewed by the Council on Pharmacy and Chemistry of the AMA. 
And they reviewed it and absolutely put thumbs down on its use because it caused so much irritation, destruction, and the radioactivity would, they figured, cause cancer in time. That was 1932. In 1937, Cecil's, one of the leading textbooks of medicine, said, the routine use of thorium dioxide is criminal. A decade later, the Journal of the AMA said, thorough trash should not be used as diodrast, another substance for enhancing x-rays and easily excretable, has been found perfectly satisfactory. The warnings go on and on. Something has to be done with the remaining people who are still alive. They have to be given an option. Should someone know they have it, can they do anything about it? All they'd have to do is check back to find out whether or not the contrast media that they were injected with was thorotrast, which is thorium dioxide, or diodrast. Diodrast, it's excreted from the body in an hour. There's no radioactivity. They're home free. If it's thorotrast, they will find it by x-ray in their bodies. If you catch it early enough, I guess they can do something about it, but uh, if they don't, why? Well, it can ruin you, which it has done. I think anybody who was subjected to a test with thorough trash should be bitter, because it is criminal. It's um, unfair and cruel. And Barbara, I'm sorry to say Doug Webster, the gentleman who was in intensive care in our report, has since died battling this problem. Tom, what age group is at risk? Primarily, people between the age of 50 to 60. This was widely used during the World War II era uh, as a diagnostic tool, but also almost anyone up to the age of 30 who may have been injected with thorotrast as babies. Because this is so terrifying and the only possibility of prolonging life is a liver transplant, this was not just done for the routine chest x-rays no. or the routine x-rays we all have. No, absolutely not. This was for more deep diagnosis, for example, broken bones, for tumors, for possibly aneurysms, this type thing. Not the standard x-rays we took as children. Well, let's hope that it affects as few people as possible. Thank sure. you, Tom. Well, later in the hour, the bat of the hour, Batman the movie is about to open. Bob Brown has a death-defying preview, Batman's back. But next, kids who need somebody